Hi, my name is Markus Scherer. I'm the chair of the ICU Technical Committee, which is part of the Unicode Consortium. I'm speaking here on behalf of Unicode, not on behalf of my employer. ICU stands for International Components for Unicode. ICU is a mature, widely used set of C, C++, and Java libraries providing Unicode and globalization support for software applications and operating systems. ICU is one of the three main products in the Unicode stack. The Unicode encoding supports thousands of languages and is the foundation for all text display, input, and interchange. It comes with data and algorithms for how characters behave and how to use them. The CLDR project supplies language-dependent data for software internationalization and additional algorithms. And ICU provides the code that implements internationalization functionality based on CLDR and on the Unicode encoding. ICU is built into all of the prominent operating systems, popular browsers like Chrome and Safari, many other applications, and many online services. You are probably using Unicode, CLDR, and ICU indirectly every day. ICU provides the core IDN support needed for many use cases, especially for user interfaces using text. Its capabilities and its coverage of languages are growing over time, as needed by our users and driven by our contributors. Also, the Unicode project teams, including ICU, have been working with standards groups on better ways of doing ITN. ICU is widely portable and gives applications the same results on all platforms and between C, C++, and Java software. This is a Google search results page, which shows many elements that are dynamically generated using ICU library code and CLDR locale data. In this case, the numbers and dates and the preferences for which unit to use for the person's height are shown for John. For example, we have a large number with grouping separators. We have a uh, duration in seconds with fractions. We have a relative date, and we have the person's height in meters as appropriate for Germany. This is an example of formatting a person's weight. That is a number with a measurement unit. The input is given in kilograms, and the formatter is set up for the person weight usage for British English. The output is in stone and pounds, appropriate for this configuration, and with the correct decimal digits and decimal separator. For another example, I will switch to one of our online demos. This one is for collation, which is the process of comparing strings so that sorted lists come out in an order that makes sense to the user. It lets users navigate the list and find things. The list might be names in their address book or songs in their music app. On the left, I have an unordered list of strings. When I click sort, I get the list in the requested order with some extra information. For example, the A umlaut sorts uh, by itself sorts after A. But when we compare longer strings, then a more important difference later may determine the order. Collation has a number of settings. The most important one is the language. And for some languages, there is more than one sort order. Here we have multiple sort orders for German, for example. The default sort order for German is the same as the Unicode default order. There are also parametric settings which we can apply on top of any language's sort order. For example, we can set strengths to primary to ignore the diacritics and the case differences. So on again. Or we can set numeric to on to get the file names to sort in the order of the numbers. And now we can see that these names are in that order. And back to the presentation. I see you has many benefits. For example, we keep our API stable so that developers can upgrade to newer versions without rewriting their code using ICU. Some of our APIs have been stable for 20 years. We keep new APIs in a draft state until we are confident that they work well. Performance is best for high volume text processing. 
For example, properties look up normalization, text segmentation, and collision. ICU is widely used, but nothing is perfect. The ICU project started in the 1990s, and some of our APIs reflect best practices of that time. In some cases, we have added new and improved versions of APIs. We could do more of that, but there are some trade-offs. The ICU libraries have grown fairly large, adding functionality over time. We have done work to let users build only what they need, but more could be done. ICU has a tool for building just the data needed for a specific use case. However, it can be a bit cumbersome to find out the minimal data that is needed for a use case. Because we keep our API stable, we cannot remove ones for which we have developed better, more modern replacements. We carry both the old and the new versions for largely the same functionality. We only require features of older versions of C++ and Java because long-term users need ICU to work on older versions of platforms. There is a new relatively uh, there is a new related Unicode project called ICU for X, which is free of such constraints and builds on modern best practices and on learnings from ICU and other IC IDN libraries. It covers a small but growing subset of the ICU functionality and will be especially useful where size is most important. ICU is developed in a public GitHub repository with Jira for more capable issue management. We accept bug reports, feature requests, and patches, and are open to new contributors who want to help evolve for ICU. You need not be an ITN expert, but working on low-level libraries requires a fair bit of attention to details. ICU and other Unicode projects drive ITN standards and support across the industry. You could contribute to supporting more languages, more use cases, more consistent results across systems and applications for the benefit of users everywhere. Active contributors drive and shape the development and in return benefit from the work of others. Thank you very much for watching. Please go to unicode.org for more information.